I never expected to be able to go anywhere like this in my entire life. Being out here is just one of those situations that you'll never forget. It's so very Montessori High School that the first real international school trip we go on is to somewhere like Mongolia. It's just crazy the amount of things that we can do. I've traveled more in the last year and a half than I've traveled 16 years in my life. We high school students are the deepest any high school has gone into the Gobi. Being able to take two weeks to come out to Mongolia in the field with a group of scientists is just fantastic. The biggest aspect of, of Montessori is always experiential learning. You really can't learn about digging in the sand without really doing it. In the summer of 2009, 10 students from Montessori High School at University Circle began a unique expedition. Accompanied by a team of paleontologists and several native Mongolian students and teachers, they traveled to the city of Ulaanbaatar, visited the Flaming Cliffs, and camped right in the heart of Alton Ula. Setting out on a magnificent two-week journey, they adapted to a different way of life. We're here in the Gobi, and it's kind of windy, kind of sandy. It's really windy and really it's kind of dry. Did you mention dry? You just have to be ready to step out of your comfort zone. Being alone in the desert, just our group, is both a great thing and slightly worrisome. I think it's exhilarating. <laughs> I'm really impressed that the students have put up with as much as they have to put up with. You know, it would be nice if we had unlimited water so we could shower every day. The climate has been a big change from Cleveland. I think it's been up to 110, and the heat definitely gets to you when you're hiking. It's neat to see an area that really hasn't been touched by civilization yet. I really enjoy the landscape. It's sort of calming and peaceful in a violent, dry, hot, windy way. Their goal was to study and collect dinosaur bones in the world's famous sites of the Gobi. With the invaluable guidance of Dr. Michael Ryan, an expert paleontologist from the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, the team successfully helped with the excavation of a Sorolophus skull, a dinosaur that rivals the size of the more common Tyrannosaurus rex. Most people don't think of paleontology as like a career opportunity, and then to come here and actually do it it like opens up a whole new path. Being here, anywhere you go, you would have encountered dinosaur bones. And if you know what to look for, you can find them pretty much anywhere, which makes it so much easier to do scientific research. We are in a locality known as El Dorado because a lot of really significant finds have been made here. Although I'm not sure that we've made any yet, although Dr. Evans did find a small mammal skull and we found an area with a lot of small, maybe this big, eggs. I really did think we would find like an entire skeleton and thinking about it now like it's really exciting when we find like four or five vertebra bones from a tail you know what I mean. So are those, are ribs, those are vertebrae over here? When you look at them in a museum you see an entire bone usually in a skeleton whereas out here you're actually looking for bone fragments to tell you what things are. And you have to realize how much work actually went into finding that going out into the badlands planning all these trips first of all finding it excavating it all the work done preparing it I'd like to have the students take away an appreciation for the amount of effort it takes before you get a result in science, especially in paleontology. Look at that. Another complete centro. Oh, wow! Check it out! If I have this bone and I don't know what it is, I can go talk to Dr. Ryan or Dr. Evans or Caleb. And if I have a rock and I want to learn about the sediments or the rock formations in the area, I can go talk to Dr. Bottom. And they know so much. We'll pick up a bone and, you know, say, what is this? And, you know, something they've probably seen a thousand times. And then they'll say with enthusiasm, oh, this is a metatarsal. Or like, oh, this is a toe bone of a dinosaur. It's and common. it's obvious they are really excited about dinosaurs and really passionate about their profession. So this is the shin bone. That's the ankle bone. This is a bone of the flat of the foot, and there's a toe. We also have Mongolian scientists 
So it really shows you how like science breaks barriers that other things don't, where you can not know the same language as someone else, but you can communicate with them through what you're doing. Nice. 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 I can't do This is the, uh, the Tomb of the Dragons. It was originally discovered by the Russians. And they excavated several um, complete or nearly complete serolophus, so one of the duckbill dinosaur skeletons. And the most remarkable thing is that they had very well preserved skin impressions around the skeletons. What we're getting the students to do this morning is to take the areas that are still uh, in natural position and brush those areas off and then we're going to map those bones and we're going to measure those bones to get an idea of just how big the site is and how many dinosaurs are preserved here. We're taking this big grid area and we're like mapping out where all the different pieces are so even if we don't take it this year it might be valuable if we need it again sometime in the future. Yeah, are huge. They are huge. Dr. Bottom Garf is a trained sedimentologist. He's going to uh, take her notebook and describe the changes in the rock layer. So we'll be able to track where the bone bed sits within the Met and tell us where we sit in relation to the other rock groups that are around here. And then I think Caleb's job today is going to be helping you students to collect some of this material. Me and Nick are basically just turning over rocks to find any other pieces of bone we might have not seen before. because. And we have a lot of big rocks here, so there's a good possibility that we find something cool. Inside this rock is actually a skull Wait. of a duck bill. You can see the teeth along right here, and these are fragments from there. Yeah, this one you can see. And in here, this is part of the upper jaw, I think. This is the very tip, tippity top of the Sorolophus spike lake. Crest. Awesome. And we hope that it belongs with that skull over there, which would be really, really amazing. Cool. In this bone bin, in addition to the number of Sorolophus skeletons that came out, there was a Tarposaurus. I want you to have your hammer and your chisel and your brush. And if we decide to collect those things, we, we will uh, put plaster and burlap over them. In some cases, I don't actually need to collect the specimen, but what I need to do is expose the fossilized bone out of the rocky matrix more so I can photograph it and take measurements off of this. And eventually we'll be able to get a paper that the Montessori students have all contributed to. This is a very important place paleontologically. Uh, unfortunately, as we can see here, it's been heavily poached recently. Um, so what we're doing now is trying to salvage some of the stuff that was left by the poachers. There are fascinating fossils, and I'm kind of sad about the amount of poaching that has gone on. You see a stunning amount of poached quarries. You see these dinosaur bones, which could be really, really important to science, shattered. It's not just a Mongolian problem, it's a global problem. These resources are not renewable. Yep. They're not like a tree where you can plant another one and it'll grow in its place. If there was a huge dinosaur bone in my backyard, if I was mean, I would keep it and sell it for millions of dollars. But the scientists would never be able to learn more about that dinosaur and that could be a huge missing link between a lot of knowledge that is unknown. A lot of these specimens that are being destroyed are unique specimens or one-of-a-kind specimens. There's just so much we don't know about the history of, of life on Earth and fossils can tell us so much and they're so rare. So to have them destroyed, it's, it's sad and we hope that this experience will spread that word. That enthusiasm is kind of transferred to us and it makes me hope that from our example a lot of high schools will follow and come here. They'd want to travel, they'd want to go and see the world, um, to learn different languages, experience different cultures. There's a lot of responsibility that comes with blazing the way for other people and it kind of makes me realize how lucky we are. I really admire the students' willingness to ask questions, to interact with the people, and to just kind of immerse themselves into this experience. You just have to do things that you haven't done before, like eat things that you haven't ate before and deal with it and you know. It's Mongolia, it's like in Asia, I've never been to Asia. You have to have an open mind. It's clearly like a beautiful country and there's just so much culture in it that people don't really know about. From the Mongolians I met, they're a really open-minded people and 
extraordinarily friendly. Despite our cultures, despite our differences, we still get along. Now that I'm here, I have to say it's totally worth it. Being able to actually touch and feel dinosaur bones and experience a culture so different from my own is really rewarding.